new video on a video solutions of CSI and NetJRF for Science since 2019. So in this video series, I'm going to explain 10 more questions from part B. So without wasting time, let's start. So the first question is, which of the following semi-conservative element in seawater? Options are calcium, chlorine, iron and carbonate. Now they are talking about semi-conservative element. If you see this chlorine, no, this chlorine is conservative and it is a major ion. It is uh, relatively unreactive in nature. So it has maximum residence time in the ocean. So it can't be semi-conservative because it is a conservative thing. Okay. If you see this iron, it is non-conservative. Uh, it is uh, sometimes act as a it is both you can say it is non-conservative as well as it is a nutrient it is a nutrient if you increase the concentration of iron in a world ocean it will increase the productivity over there so it is a non-conservative element if you see the co2 co2 uh, is uh, uh, in like it is a compound it is a gas whenever it uh, reacts with water in the oceans it forms carbonic acid so again uh, it can't be there in the isolated form it uh, generally reacts with the water and form carbonic acid so it can't be a saving conservative element so the right answer over here is none other than calcium so uh, it is a semi conservative element in a seawater so the right answer will be a so let's mark it down this is a now uh, it is very important uh, question. The travel time taken by a P wave for a surface focus earthquake to travel al along a straight line path through the earth and be recorded at an antipodal point is approximately. So what is antipodal point means? Suppose uh, uh, this is a earth. Okay. Spherical earth. This is earth. And at this point, point over here, we have epicenter and this is a hypocenter inside our earth and this is a epicenter on the surface this point is called anticenter and antipodal point just at 180 degree from the epicenter or hypocenter this is a antipodal point now we have to find uh, uh, what we have to find we have to find travel time means we have to basically find time we know that time is distance by velocity right so time is what t is equal to distance by velocity we know that <clears throat> this t is equal to d by v now what we have to do is we have to find the total distance by velocity okay so this distance is what the distance between these two points is what uh, our radius is 6400 kilometers so the total diameter will be uh, 12,800. This is distance. 12,800, right? 800. It is very difficult to write using pointer. So this is the distance. And the time will be, uh, and the velocity will be what? So we take average uh, velocity of P wave in all the spheres like uh, in crust in mental and core so the p wave speed in crust is 6 km per second in mental it is 13.5 km per second and in core it is 11 km per second when you take the average velocity in entire earth it will be 10 it will be 10 okay so you cut this it becomes 1 to 8 0 okay here they are asking approximately so this 1280 is approximately close to 1200 so the right answer will be 2 over here okay if you change the value the, this value it becomes more close okay so in some books the average velocity of uh, this p wave in the entire earth will close to the 12 in that case again it is more close to the this this uh, right answer okay so now moving to the next question steam competency denotes the transport of sediment so what is competence and what is capacity both are different things steam competence is basically measures the size of the particle steam competence measures size of the particle so the right answer sorry 
so the right answer over here is largest side which side largest side मतलब कोई भी करंट और सॉरी स्ट्रीम कितने बड़े ग्रेन्स को ले जा सकता है द मैक्सिमम एबिलिटी यू कैन से सो द लार्जेस्ट साइड विल बी द कॉम्पिटेंस एंड देयर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड कैपेसिटी द कैपेसिटी मेजर्स क्वांटिटी ऑफ सेडिमेंट सो द अमाउंट ऑफ सेडिमेंट इज कॉल्ड कैपेसिटी एंड द लार्जेस्ट साइड ऑफ अ सेडिमेंट दैट कैन बी होल्ड बाय अ स्ट्रीम इज कॉल्ड कॉम्पिटेंस सो बोथ आर डिफरेंट थिंग्स ओके नाउ मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन which one of the following statement is not true given that the salinity distribution with depth over a mid latitude ocean shows a decrease with depth so we we have to find which one is not true okay so here we can see that in mid latitude we have what we have deserts right so if there is deserts that means there is less precipitation right that's why there is deserts that's why it is semi arid or arid condition is prevailing over there if there is more water in that case it can't be a desertic condition so for this option it is very very easy here we can see that precipitation exceeds evaporation this is wrong in mid latitude we have deserts and over there there is net evaporation not precipitation evaporation exceeds precipitation again if you come across this kind of question no first check which two options are opposing each other now here one and two are opposing one and four are opposing each other right so that means one of them is wrong so this is wrong okay moving to the next question electrical discharge suddenly hit the conducting air channel in the earth's atmosphere which expands and generates shock waves these waves spreads as so we have to find uh, these waves is what so if you see this inertia gravity waves the first one so this uh, inertia gravity waves this is basically a gravity wave in a rotating system and it is called internal gravity wave also or yeah, sorry inertial gravity wave okay so this is inertial gravity wave this can't be uh, formed through uh, this electrical discharge now seismic wave is generated during earthquake so again this is not true if you see this rossby wave this rossby wave is basically a planetary or inter inertial wave absorbed in the atmosphere and ocean due to rotation so this rossby wave is generated due to rotation in atmosphere and ocean and this fourth is sound wave okay now why sound wave see all the thunders are generated due to the sudden electrical discharge right so this will be the sound wave called thunder over here temperature goes up to 30000 degree celsius during lightning discharge no the air has temperature of 30000 degree celsius which is five times the temperature of sun surface under such condition the uh, the region over electrical discharge get ionized and it forms a low pressure zone so extreme low pressure zone okay now this to fill this low pressure zone air from all the side it come towards that region and forms a sound that sound is called thunder and so the right answer will be the sound wave here western boundary uh, boundary ocean currents are stronger in both the hemisphere compared to eastern boundary currents now what is the reason so over here the right answer will be four i tell you why c when current moves from lower latitude to the higher latitude coriolis force increases coriolis force is maximum at poles minimum at equator so that is the reason why as we move towards the higher latitude it get stronger to get stronger okay and uh, there is something called western intensification also so on the western side of the ocean we have high intensity uh, currents then there is another question which one of the following sets of processes best exemplifies the key function of heterotrophic bacteria in the marine environment so let's see over here the right answer will be 3 i will tell you why what is this remineralization means remineralization is when a bacteria consumes dissolved organic matter and bring about the 
remineralization of a nutrient like carbon, phosphorus and nitrogen back to water that is called remineralization. So this is a process of heterotrophic bacteria. Second respiration we already know what is respiration means basically we generate energy during this respiration method and organic matter oxidation this is basically a decomposition of organic matter. So these all are the key function of heterotrophic bacteria. Now for a planet earth okay we have to find which comes first ocean or atmosphere so the right answer will be two i will tell you why ocean formed after atmosphere yes it's right because the initial atmosphere is a that is primitive atmosphere is made up of mostly volcanic outgassing like methane carbon dioxide water and ammonia these outgassing contains and then form clouds and that clouds helps to fill whole ocean at the same time some meteoritic activity also forms our ocean but our uh, atmosphere is uh, like initial it's primitive okay then after uh, our oceans formed so the right answer will be two now uh, uh, second last question conditional instability in the atmosphere is observed when so this conditional instability is observed the right answer will be this the environmental lapse rate is greater than the saturated adiabatic lapse rate but lower than dry adiabatic lapse rate i will i will tell you why the state of a layer upon saturated air when the lapse rate of temperature is less than the dry adiabatic lapse rate that is around 10 degree celsius per kilometer but it is greater than the moist adiabatic lapse rate now i will tell you exactly what it means moist adiabatic lapse rate is 4 degrees celsius per kilometer since air is already uh, have water vapor so if we rise it by one kilometer it requires a lot of latent heat to get converted into another form so that's why the temperature over here is very less 4 degrees celsius per kilometer but in a case of dry adiabatic lapse since it is dry that means less humid less humid means late less latent heat generation that's why it is 10 degrees celsius so again the right answer will be three the coldest part of the atmosphere the coldest part of the atmosphere is uh, none other than uh, mesosphere okay so the right answer will be mesos mesopause on mesopause temperature goes up to minus 95 degrees celsius it is the coldest layer on the earth on the uh, earth's atmosphere or uh, if you talk about uh, uh, on earth's surface then it is in antarctica that is vostok and the temperature over there at vostok station is minus 87 so if uh, somebody asks you on the earth surface it is vostok station if in the atmosphere it is mesopause so that's it for the today uh, hope you like my video thank you very much